the Starliner mission and a promising start. In June 2024, NASA astronauts Sunita Suni Williams and Barry Butch Wilmore launched aboard Boeing's Starliner spacecraft from Cape Canaveral, Florida. This was the final crewed test flight before Boeing could officially operate missions under NASA's commercial crew program. The mission was planned to last only eight days, primarily to evaluate Starliner's performance before regular astronaut rotations. The launch was successful, and Starliner docked with the ISS as expected. However, shortly after arrival, serious technical issues emerged. Engineers detected multiple helium leaks and several thrusters malfunctioned. An oxidizer valve failure further increased concerns. Given these problems, NASA refused to risk a crewed return aboard Starliner. Instead, Williams and Wilmore remained on the ISS while NASA and Boeing investigated, leading to a months-long delay in their return. Astronaut pay and the physical and mental toll of space missions. The extended stay in space raised serious questions about how astronauts are compensated, particularly when missions go longer than planned. While many believe astronauts are paid millions, this is far from the reality. Astronauts are federal employees who follow the U.S. government pay scale, meaning they earn much less than most people think. A new NASA astronaut typically makes between $86,000 and $100,000 per year, depending on their experience. More senior astronauts can earn up to $142,000 annually, even after spending hundreds of days in space and flying multiple missions. Despite the demanding and high-risk nature of their work, astronauts do not receive any special bonuses or overtime pay for time spent beyond the original mission schedule, even when it includes months of being stranded in space. In fact, astronauts receive a small daily stipend of $5 to cover incidental expenses, which is a nominal amount that has remained unchanged for years. For Williams and Wilmore, spending 286 days in space resulted in just $1,430 each, a sum that shocked many when made public. This disparity feels especially unfair considering the physical, mental, and emotional toll the astronauts endured. In zero gravity, astronauts experience weakened muscles and bones, changes in their cardiovascular system, and deteriorating eyesight. They are also at increased risk of cosmic radiation, which could lead to health problems later in life, including cancer. On top of these physical challenges, astronauts face significant mental stress. Initially planning for an eight-day mission, the astronauts had to adapt to uncertainty, living in a confined space for months without knowing when or how they would return. The emotional strain of being away from loved ones for so long adds to the difficulty of missions like these. This situation also raised broader concerns about the need for fair compensation and clear policies to protect astronauts in similar situations, especially when they are forced to stay in space unexpectedly for extended periods. Starliners, malfunctions, and NASA's tough decision. After docking, engineers discovered multiple helium leaks, one losing pressure at 400 PSY per minute, affecting Starliner's propulsion system. A third leak appeared after docking, followed by a fourth later. Meanwhile, five of 28 reaction control thrusters malfunctioned. Although four were restored remotely, one remained inoperative. Additionally, an oxidizer valve failure raised concerns about Starliner's safety for re-entry. Due to these mounting technical issues, NASA decided against bringing the astronauts back aboard Starliner. Instead, Williams and Wilmore continued their ISS duties while Boeing engineers worked for months diagnosing the spacecraft. Eventually, NASA and Boeing agreed to return Starliner to Earth empty, allowing a thorough inspection after landing. On September 7, 2024, Starliner undocked and landed safely in White Sands, New Mexico, marking the first time a crewed spacecraft returned unoccupied due to safety concerns. NASA's backup plan, bringing the astronauts home. With Starliner deemed unsafe for re-entry, NASA needed an alternative way to bring Williams and Wilmore back. The only other operational spacecraft in the commercial crew program was SpaceX's Crew Dragon. NASA modified the Crew-9 mission, originally scheduled to launch with four astronauts. Instead, only two were sent, leaving two empty seats for the stranded astronauts. This solution ensured continued crew rotations while providing a safe return. On March 14, 2025, Crew-9 launched from Kennedy Space Center. Upon arrival at the ISS, the new crew joined the station's existing team. 
After a brief handover, Williams and Wilmore boarded Crew Dragon on March 18, 2025, alongside two colleagues. The capsule undocked and re-entered Earth's atmosphere without issues, safely splashing down off Florida's coast. Their return after 286 days in space, far longer than the planned eight-day mission, sparked discussions about astronaut compensation, raising concerns about the lack of extra pay for extended missions. Despite the mission's difficulties, Williams and Wilmore's successful return via Crew Dragon highlighted SpaceX's reliability in NASA's commercial spaceflight program. Public reactions and Boeing's struggles. The situation surrounding the astronauts' extended stay in space didn't go unnoticed, sparking public reactions and leading to broader discussions about the treatment of astronauts. Former President Donald Trump famously commented on the astronauts' pay, expressing his surprise at how little they were compensated. He said, is that all? That's not a lot for what they had to go through. If I have to, I'll pay it out of my own pocket. His statement resonated with many who felt the compensation was insufficient given the risks and challenges astronauts face, especially in a mission that went far beyond its planned schedule. This highlighted the lack of proper rules and policies to address unexpected situations, like astronauts being forced to stay in space for months longer than planned. As the focus shifted to NASA's partners, Boeing found itself in a difficult position. The company had already been under scrutiny for its repeated delays, cost overruns, and ongoing technical issues with the Starliner spacecraft. The spacecraft's recent mission was supposed to mark a major success for Boeing and prove critics wrong, but the technical malfunctions and delays resulted in a major setback. Boeing's financial struggles with the Starliner program are significant. While NASA awarded Boeing a $4.2 billion contract to develop the spacecraft, Boeing has already spent over $1.5 billion of its own funds to fix problems and bring the spacecraft to operational status. Facing increasing pressure, Boeing has reportedly explored selling the Starliner program, but so far has not found a buyer. This entire ordeal has damaged Boeing's reputation and its role in NASA's commercial crew program. Astronauts who were stuck in space, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore, say they'd fly on Boeing's Starliner again. Starliner astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams speaking out at a news conference for the first time since returning to Earth after an extended 286-day stay in space, said Monday they did not blame Boeing for the spacecraft problems that effectively stranded them aboard the International Space Station. In fact, asked if he would fly again aboard the Starliner, Wilmore said, yes, because we're going to rectify all the issues that we encountered. We're going to fix them. We're going to make it work. Boeing is completely committed, NASA is completely committed, and with that, I'd get on in a heartbeat. Added Williams, I would agree. The spacecraft is really capable. There were a couple things that need to be fixed, and folks are actively working on that, but it is a great spacecraft, and it has a lot of capability that other spacecraft don't have. To see that thing successful and to be part of that program is an honor. Asked if he blamed Boeing for the propulsion system helium leaks and thruster problems that ultimately led NASA to bring the Starliner down without its crew, extending their stay aboard the space station from eight days to more than nine and a half months, Wilmore said, that is a question that I cannot answer in a couple of comments, but I'll start with me. There were questions that I, as the commander of the spacecraft, that I should have asked and I did not. At the time, I didn't know I needed to. And maybe you could call that hindsight, but I'll start and point the finger and I'll blame me. I could have asked some questions and the answers to those questions could have turned the tide. So blame, I don't like that term, but certainly there's responsibility throughout all the programs and certainly you can start with me. Responsibility with Boeing? Yes. Responsibility with NASA? Yes, all the way up and down the chain. We all are responsible. We all own this. Their repeatedly extended mission generated enormous attention in the wake of problems with Starliner. NASA's decision three months after launch to keep them in orbit until this year, and comments from President Trump claiming the astronauts had been abandoned in space by the Biden administration. Williams denied feeling abandoned or stuck during an interview with CBS News in February, saying she was honored to be here and a part of the team doing world-class science. They said much of the same Monday, but they avoided answering questions about the political aspects of the mission. 
Wilmore and Williams returned to Earth on March 18, accompanied by two outgoing station flyers who were wrapping up their own six-month stay aboard the lab. The Starliner astronauts, like all returning station flyers, began physical therapy back at the Johnson Space Center to help them readjust to gravity. They both looked fit and were in obviously good spirits talking with reporters Monday. In fact, Williams said she went for a three-mile run on Sunday. How long were the astronauts stuck in space? By the time they splashed down off Florida's Gulf Coast, Wilmore and Williams had spent 286 days in space. While the extended mission was much longer than originally planned, it ranked sixth on the list of longest flights by U.S. astronauts. The record is held by astronaut Frank Rubio, whose planned six-month stay aboard the space station was extended to just over a full year. 371 days because of coolant leaks in the Russian Soyuz that carried him to orbit. He came back to Earth aboard a replacement Soyuz in September 2023. Even though his record remains unbroken, problems with the Boeing Starliner that carried Wilmore and Williams to space triggered extensive coverage in the United States that far exceeded the coverage of Rubio's even longer mission. Why were the astronauts stuck in space so long? Three years after the space shuttle's retirement in 2011, NASA awarded multi-billion dollar contracts to Boeing and SpaceX to build ferry ships to carry astronauts to and from the space station. SpaceX has now launched 11 piloted Crew Dragon flights for NASA and five purely commercial missions. A sixth commercial launch is currently scheduled for Monday night, but Boeing ran into multiple problems with its Starliner that required two unpiloted test flights before Wilmore, who is 62, and Williams, 59, both former military test pilots, were finally cleared to launch last June 5th on the spacecraft's first piloted mission after engineers decided a small helium leak in the ship's propulsion pressurization system would not get worse. The astronauts successfully docked with the space station the next day, but the Starliner experienced additional helium propulsion system leaks and several maneuvering jets did not produce the expected thrust. While the flight originally was expected to last about eight days, NASA and Boeing carried out weeks of tests and analysis to determine what caused the problems and whether the spacecraft could be trusted to safely bring its crew back to Earth. By August, Boeing managers were convinced engineers understood the problems and the crew could, in fact, safely come home in the Starliner. But NASA managers eventually ruled out that option and decided to keep the astronauts aboard the station until early this year, when they could hitch a ride home aboard a Crew Dragon. That spacecraft was launched last September with just two crew members on board, along with two empty seats for Wilmore and Williams. The Starliner, meanwhile, successfully returned to Earth earlier in September, kicking off hands-on troubleshooting and ongoing work to prepare for the eventual resumption of flights. Wilmore Williams, Crew-9 Dragon Commander Nick Haig, and cosmonaut Alexander Gorbunov originally planned to return to Earth in February but the Crew-10 Dragon needed to carry their replacements to the station, ran into problems of its own, and the flight was delayed to the end of March. Those problems, and the threat of additional delays, prompted NASA to switch the Crew-10 flyers to a different Crew Dragon, eventually moving its launch up to March 12th, paving the way for Crew-9 to head home.